Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. <sighs> Happy Monday. Today is the 25th. March 25th, uh, officially the day of the full moon lunar eclipse, which happened early morning around 3 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. So we're already well set within the energy. I hope you're doing well. You are riding the waves soundly, and that this week is off to a productive start. <laughs> well, Nine of Swords. Hmm. Everybody's not having a productive start. Everybody's not riding the wave. I implore you. Is it employ or implore? Maybe implore? Implore. <laughs> I think. <laughs> to tap into my moon message, the last message before this one, um, in regards to how to kind of ride the wave of this transit, because this speaks to anxiety about things that have yet to occur or being in fear of or anxious about some impending danger, unsavory event, or, you know, defeat or demise with the Nine of Swords. And it's a completion of... It, you know what? It really does speak to the, really the cycle that we're in now in terms of it being a, a very culminating cycle of release, bringing things to an ending, a close, a finality, closure, so that that any unfa so that any unfavorable energy and people, places, or things, habits, relationships you know, thoughts, beliefs, anything of the sort that's in resistance to what would allow you to sleep well at night can finally be put to rest. And, and subsequently, you may be put to rest. Hopefully, you know, not in the, <laughs> in the dearly departed sense, um, you know, for sure, but so that you can sleep at night and rest easy or be at peace and at rest even in your waking state about what is to come, even if you don't quite know exactly what that is, but certainly not amplifying any um, unfavorable experiences by projecting them to already be so. That's the energy of the Nine of Swords. There may be things coming up to um, to address, um, particularly by way of relationships and partnerships. So this could be the energy of someone up at night over a breakup or a couple or one or two, one of the two of a couple dynamic is restless because of some disagreement. It could be because of the heightened intensity and perhaps even um, uh, well, I don't want to project it, but there there may be things that are coming up to address at this time that are highlighting certain imbalances within partnerships or relationships or disagreement or just where you may differ in opinion or perspective. And 
depending on how you ride a particular wave emotionally and then also communicatively, how you express it and dialogue and, you know, have that exchange, it could be stress inducing, I will say, to not know, because we could be talking about the questioning of relationships and partnerships that perhaps up until this point, either you haven't really had a reason to be in disagreement or you've been, you've done a good job of kind of um, weathering your disagreements in the sense where either you, you just, you just have them and you move on or you sweep them under the rug, like whatever your coping mechanism, there it is. It's like something about coping here. And that, that, um element of diversion may not be available at this time or it just may not be effective. So case in point, if like your way of coping with disagreement or disconnection in some way is is pretty habitual in, in, in the sense that it just allows you to get over it or move move on to the next, get through the night to the next day, sweep it under the rug, like I said, fight it out and then sex it out. Like whatever the mechanism of moving on gets to be, it may be a matter of really um, bringing closure to whatever the core of that discrepancy may be. So that's not just a matter of it being uh, subdued for a time only to be revisited again um, and something that is reoccurring or that just is like an undercurrent of a connection or a partnership. And this could be in any way, shape and form, but of course, particularly in the way that I'm speaking, it could be intimately so. But it's popping up in all types of ways. It could be in your professional partnerships. It could be within your friend circle or friends one-to-one. -one. It could be family relationships. However you relate to people and how people relate to you is kind of time for there to be complete transparency and authenticity within that dynamic to make decisions as to how or to solidify how that um, that that dynamic gets to um, continue to work or it's like everything's coming up for review at this time between the eclipse season and also Mercury being in the pre-shadow and about to be in retro on April the 1st. Things are coming up for review. So I, what I'm trying to get to is that where you may have been able to kind of glaze over the obvious or even the not so obvious, you know, either way on either end of the spectrum, it's like now you get to actually address it, maybe even confront it, which is the word that I've been trying to like resist, you know, because I, I'm not one that really loves confrontation personally. And most people really don't, even if they may be confrontational, sometimes they don't want to be confronted. So this is the energy perhaps of um, being being worrisome. I can't even say thoughtful because it's allowing your mind to kind of take hold, like overthinking it to some degree and and forward forwardly thinking in to the future for potential outcomes or possibilities that are not altogether pleasing or grounding. So it very well may be that a conflict is on the horizon or in, as a result of a conflict that feels unresolvable, this may be a, the pinnacle point of decision as to whether you continue on in a relationship or in a partnership or in, a, in, in, in whatever dynamic of, of uh, socialization we may be speaking about. And just merely the contemplation of change and what that looks like on the other side, you know, disruption of your comfort zone is where one may allow their mind to kind of create narratives and storylines that haven't quite 
played out, you know? So as I spoke about in the message with the new moon, it's kind of like, I mean, the full moon, you can't, it's, you, you kind of don't want to let your emotions, um, you don't want to be too submerged in your emotions, even as you would want to be one with them and get and, and validate them and be accepting and um, graceful with them and yourself in that um, in in that feeling. But you also don't want to allow your mind, which is the most powerful tool, to wander on account of what you may feel. And because right now, the intensity of those sensations are at such a, a heightened vibration than they typically would be, that it may, again, cause you to kind of think beyond what is even true right now and create a possibility that may not even need to be true, you know, you know, to kind of like put the cart before the horse type of thing. So anyway, I don't even know why I'm going on and on about that with the, no other cars, but in the way of there being some, some anxious energy here, some, um, maybe even some paranoia, mm, not so much paranoia, but as much as it would be what the What's that? The eight of eight of wands? No, the nine of wands. But definitely anxiety here. But just be mindful that your regardless of even what it may potentially look like, you could be absolutely right as to what it could be. But you could also be absolutely right projecting that mental energy and and uh, transmuting that emotional intelligence toward what you would like for it to be, what you would like for, what you would truly like to create for yourself as opposed to, as opposed to what you would rather not. Because one way or another, you're probably going to be right. <laughs> but you don't want to be right about all the wrong things, is my point, okay? So get some rest in, in a time such as this, like not just mentally, energetically, like actually physically lay your ass down and go to sleep. When you're having those moments of mental anguish, and you absolutely, there's absolutely nothing you can do about what it is you may be fixated on or worried about. That's the best time either to divert your attention towards something that will raise your vibration, something, you know, that might take your mind off of that thing or put you in a position of um, peace, you know, or to literally just go to sleep, lay down, relax, don't feel guilty about it at this time. Because sometimes sleep is the and that regenerative regenerative factor of rest that only happens when we sleep can make all the difference. Staying up all night or worrying yourself to death about what coulda, shoulda, woulda, or what might or what what might not is really not the productive uh, mode of energetic expression. It's just, it's just not. It's only going to exhaust you more. And as I said, create more of what you don't want or whatever it is that you're exerting your energy thinking about in the first place. So let's see what else we got. Somebody's feeling defensive feeling like they may need to defend themselves or feeling attacked or nervous about being attacked. Again, this could, this could either be, well, it is kind of on the back end, so it could be someone, someone's anxious that they may need to defend themselves against what? Let's see. Well, let's go here. Let's get that. What happened before this point of defense? Against fame. 
family. Oh, oh, that's way too much. Hold on. Oh, yeah, I got way too many cards here. Family. This could be a mother or a baby mama. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Somebody up at night over. Family, baby mama, some expectation of a windfall and moving forward that's either not going to happen or some loss of an opportunity and the end of that cycle, but it ending in despair. So maybe somebody's fear of being left alone here, disconnected from family, and then maybe, like I said, a wife, baby mama, a girlfriend, some object of affection, and her moving on, or there being some moving on with her taking the kid. Is that what we're talking about here? And being left in the cold, left by yourself. And that being like some finality of uh, of prosperity or, you know, kind of closing the cycle on what would have been a hopeful situation with the world card. Let me see. That was a lot of information. And no wonder this man's up all night. <laughs> All right, yeah, like the, the the wheel of fortune here. So somebody's afraid of their fate. They feel like because of actions that they've taken or haven't taken, no, a position that they've made with the seven of wands, that's somebody standing their ground on a firm position. They took a certain position or or... Um, had a, a particular stance in life and they're worried that the faded outcome is that th they're going to have to answer for that by way of needing to protect themselves or that because of the stance that they took they've created a lot of enemies and that's what keeps them up at night They might be in jail. Yeah, look at all this conflict now that I'm thinking about it with the Nine of Swords. Or somebody's afraid of being, being in jail. Let's keep this separate here so we can keep an eye on this man. <laughs> Make sure he don't do nothing reckless. <laughs> Uh, yeah, here's the conflict. Here's the fight here that somebody is afraid is coming their way. Some conflict, competition, chaos, confusion, and change. So maybe what was worth... Mm, can I really say that? I don't know if I can. Let's get another one. Yeah, because, you know, I was going to say, well, those that may have been working with him at a time, there may be a fear of them, of, of alliances becoming enemies here. Because with the five of wands, sometimes it can just be friendly competition or, you know, like casual competition. But given somebody is already in defensive mode, that means that there, there's maybe a fear of those that are closest to him becoming a threat. Maybe that know the most about him, that have the most intel or influence over his well-being for some reason. But again, with the energy that's been coming up and with the Wheel of Fortune, that's definitely like when, I, when I'm talking about floating or riding the wave, it's like being in, in surrender to the evolution of time. 
you know, of, of when there's time to close a cycle and, and begin anew. The world card popped up, with that, which definitely signifies that as well. And if you, one way to certainly exhaust yourself mentally, spiritually, physically, and every other type of lee, is to resist change when it's inevitable. And especially when it is um, paramount to your success or well-being in some way, shape, or form. In this way, paramount to someone's peace. So it's like someone's been trying to push back on what is absolutely necessary, perhaps changing the environment that they are submitting themselves to where they feel like they have to be defensive, seeing the handwriting on the wall, again, in relationships as to how this may not be a functional fit anymore. If you feel like you, you you can't be safe or secure within whatever dynamic that may be, there's certainly time to readjust in some way, shape, or form. And it gives the sense of someone that is afraid of what may happen if they disconnect from, it's like have like frenemies. That's what this energy is given. Like you are around a certain, um, yeah, maybe for the, for the purpose of fortune or, or some prosperous agenda, you have certain associations and, you know, you, you keep up with a certain crowd or a certain, uh, I don't know, like affiliation because of what you can glean from that connection. But really, like, it's more of a burden than it is a blessing because maybe you got to be somebody different than when you are who you would naturally be or you have to protect your ego or protect your energy because they're not particularly high vibrational or what they into is not really what you holistically want to be into but you go along for the ride for the reward for the purpose of the reward it's like time's up for that with the will of fortune and even you know as i was speaking in the very beginning um, cosmically speaking, it's just like there's no room for that level of authenticity anymore. Either you're going to surrender to live live out that the fortune of that fate for a season and a cycle that will not be favorable, by the way. You'll be pretty much sentencing yourself to be stuck in a cycle of continuous... Um, insecurity and and instability and constant competition and backlash and you know always feeling like you got to fight for a spot or fight to to have a position rather than taking a chance to go find your tribe whatever that may be or to be by yourself if it calls for that as well which is usually if we can get into it as I spoke about the relationship piece about people, you know, feeling like this might be the inevitable disconnection or demise of certain dynamics and people worried about what that means, what it means beyond that point for what they've been comforted by. So you may not even like these people, but <clears throat> you, you're comfortable with what you know you can get from them or you know what you can have on account of connection with them or to them you don't know surely you know what gets to be if you start out fresh on your own or go you know separate from from folks such an ener energy such as this you may feel like you might become the source of the gossip or you know the topic of discussion or you know the the one under attack in some way, shape, or form, because you're not a part of it. It's like the one, of, you know, how it is, like those those frenemies when they're all in the room chit-chatting about whoever is not there, you know that when you're not there, you're the one that gets chit-chatted about. So you want to always try to be up in the mix because God forbid, you know, you'd be missing and you either miss out on something, miss out on some action, or you, you know, your name gets dragged in some way, shape, or form. But it's like, who wants to really live like that? 
And universally speaking, that's not productive to creation, to the evolution of creation or to the sustenance of creation at this time. It only begots more, um, I don't even know what to call this, like <laughs> more, I don't even know, confusion. You know, like who, what is that building for anyone really and truly in any pure organic sense that's going to last? So it's like a lot of the inner, the moments of of consideration and decision that some may be coming to uncomfortable uncomfortably or you know quite casually like willing and and submitted to change because it could work both ways. Um, but certainly this is the expression of the former that somebody is just afraid of what happens when they don't have what they're used to or they're not with who they they're used to being with or if they are with no one or have nothing at all then what and it's like you probably might get some rest <laughs> you know like you might actually get some sleep surprisingly enough Yes, that world card is like the world as someone knows it and as someone has created it for themselves is like, yeah, I think that was the nine of, um, was that the nine of wands? Yep. Yeah. The, that, and that's paranoia. The world as someone has kind of like created it for themselves. Yeah. is like, it's shifting, it's changing and they feel like they're losing control. And that's the point of devastation for this and for this individual uh primarily not being able it's like one thing to have is is one thing to have peace but it be um unpredictable it's another thing to have chaos that you can control that you may even thrive in you know as they say like control chaos where somebody's room could be a disaster but they know where everything is but in the grand scheme of things, like, you can't really function productively, really. You may, you may have adapted to that functionality, but you can't function as your whole and complete self truly in control in chaos. You can't be who you would be at your greatest, at your most supreme, when you have to constantly look over your shoulder or worry about what, how you might get snaked or backstabbed. Like this could even be on the job, right? Where you up for a promotion or you wanted a particular promotion, but everybody is coveting this position or coveting a, this particular, or, or, you know, like even in a, in a work, a work environment where like, uh, it's like a very competitive like sales or you work on commissions and stuff like that. Like you could never truly be comfortable. Of course you wouldn't sleep well at night in an environment such as that that's pretty cutthroat where, you know, you kind of got to fight to survive, you know, but somebody reverent, uh, relishes the reward more than they do the, um, their own rest literally their own peace of mind and that's causing the inner conflict because it's wearing down on them physically um and mentally and there even may there even may be a a point of let's say let's keep going but they're usually with the with the will of fortune here and the um and the world card has come out it's like some they're something has to come to an end here. It's not even really a matter of choice so much anymore. It's just a matter of how you're going to adapt to the change at this point. struggling that for that new beginning yeah this is like this is the opportunity to 
for a fresh start to do something, literally to do something different, explore some new territory. And it's good news if someone can see it that way. But it's devastating if you're dead set on having it the way that it's always been. Oh my God, what the hell is this? Oh, somebody got backstabbed big time. But see, that's why, but, and, it, and you know what it's given to? Because I, I don't be saying nothing for no reason. <laughs> Remember I said it's like a sales job or something. You got to take what I say. I, I say things. Uh, I, I make broad strokes with my expressions. I realize that some things can be very literal and very specific. And sometimes I watch back later and it has a completely different meaning or multiple meanings, even for me. So wherever you see this connection is for you to be able to relate to the ideal and receive it as it resonates for you or in relation to your situation, however it does. But it may not be this specifically, but what I was relating it to is like a sales job or some type of competitive work environment where it's like dog eat dog and you, everybody's fighting for commissions or fighting for the big accounts. And it's like he was in the throes of that culture, accepted that, you know, his his submission to that culture, his, um, I almost said initiation, uh, but I'll move past that, accepted his um, participation in that culture. It's like somebody, you know, like I signed up for this. I, I I submitted my resume or application or whatever, and I took the position and I know what it entails. And even though it keeps me up at night and I sometimes dread going to work in the morning, this is what I've chosen to do with myself. So even as you may despise what is actually given, you still have um, submitted to, you know, you've committed to your role within it. So that's what this is giving me with the seven of swords is that someone that committed to this lifestyle, this, um, culture of sorts, whatever that gets to be, and became kind of like a trickster or some type of like, you know, highly competitive spirit, but in a very diabolical sense or detrimental sense to others, causing great casualties. And just now they've become the casualty. And that's where the true um, devastation is coming because somebody definitely got swept for something big, whether it was, it's like a big, a big, it's like the big one, the big account, the big deal. Um, they were supposed to close on something or had the uh, anticipation or the, what's the right word? Like the um, expectation to close on something big and have a great access to a, a big fortune. And somehow they either got they either got fired, maybe, or they got snaked by, like I said, co-workers or whomever this affiliate circle is, whether they're friends, um, creators, family, whatever the case may be. Could even be, like I said, baby mama in some regard, like could be everything that got swept though. Somebody's whole life fortune is what I'm getting got swept away and whatever. Yeah, that's the reason for this start over with the page of wands because like I said earlier, it's like somebody doesn't have a choice. 
there is, and that's the type of energy we're in in eclipse season, where it's like, you don't, you can cry about it, <laughs> but when the universe says it's time to let something go or it's time for something to end, that's it. The best you can do is see the page of wands for what it truly is, and that's a positive new beginning in a more productive direction. Somebody can see it as a small, menial opportunity or invitation or even a small inspiration, like a new idea. And, you know, like maybe now you got all the time in the world to actually start the business or the idea that is more... Um, more signature to who you are instead of like having to make yourself, you know, mold yourself into force yourself, I should say, into something that you'd rather not be. But as I said, that's the limbo between the two worlds of acceptance and resistance. Here's the acceptance here, if someone's willing to see it, but it's all a matter of perspective. And if we all got our choice, somebody can continue to try to forge their way ahead in the way that they would like for it to be. But nine times out of 10, you become the casualty of that resistance before anyone or anything else, especially when it's universally ordained. So yeah, with that 10 of pentacles, it's like somebody, somebody took a huge hit, a big hit, either they lost the job that affords a certain um, highly lucrative lifestyle or they lost an opportunity that would have amounted to that. Um, they lost connections or access to certain circles or affiliations that are, are um, financially uh, what's the word that I would want to use? Like uh, financially beneficial, you know, I'll say it like that. Um, yeah. And they sick about it. <laughs> and they are sick about it. Hmm. star card maybe to some it feels like industry shit I'm not gonna lie it's giving those vibes or they feel like I feel like this the page of wands is what this new beginning is what could lead to a more promising point of destiny for someone they were not on the track to that unbeknownst to them or contrary to their own belief, somebody may have thought they were on the fast track to success, maybe to stardom, to prosperity, you know, whatever, but they really weren't. And it's like the reset is happening so that anyone, everyone generally can actually get to their true heart's desire, or at least have, you know, it's like a clear, a clear and clean slate to realign pathways to do that. If it, if it takes for a realignment, not everybody needs a complete realignment any more than, you know, you take your car to get a new tire and you need a whole, you know, like you, you may not need a whole, uh, what do they call it? Isn't that called a realignment when you, when you get that done to your car to, in order to, uh, productively move forward? Not everybody's in line for that. Maybe you just need to change a tire or two. But whatever it is, it's a call for acceptance and surrender. Um, for I mean, it has a great deal of promise, even for something that um, could be exactly what somebody has actually been killing themselves for all along. But they just, you know we're trying to avoid the the process, the respective process of which it gets to be accomplished. And this is the moment where spirit is like, 
Okay, now I'm gonna place you here. And what you do with this starting point is now, now you have the potential to get to here now, but if you wanna sit here and sulk and be mad and be angry and furious and anxious and resistant and, you know, mad at the world and trying to get revenge, get your get back for what you feel you lost or who did you wrong, being vengeful and, you know, all that other stuff. That the start line will all the, the the starting point will always be here, and that's just the longer you'll be sit, sitting at it, waiting to get going or waiting to get to you know that ultimate destination. I just feel like the universe is fair that way. It just is. It's like you said you wanted this. Now let me help you get this for real. Not in a way where you're going to have to kill yourself or kill anybody else, God forbid, or want to anyway, because of the level of competition and chaos and confusion. Like working in those old world systems where we, where we work in the frequency as if there's not enough and we have to step on people's backs to get to a certain point and then we have to continue to throw people under the bus to maintain that certain point it's like that's not really building much that hasn't built much it's done more to tear down and now it's time to lead with a different spirit you know with love with compassion with um spiritual uh, with uh emotional intelligence not quite as maybe perhaps you know callous and and calculated as the emperor may be just you know looking at the bottom line getting everything done very perhaps aggressive or very uh objective in their approach Certainly in this season, you know, with well, in this transit, particularly with all the energy and Pisces, <laughs> it's like you're going to feel some emotions if you never had before. And depending on how resistant you've been, maybe that's the fight right here, like to kind of resist that sensation or that sensibility this is a masculine energy, especially as opposed to the emperor, that may be more in tune to their feminine nature, definitely not resistant to it or afraid of it. And it doesn't mean that they have to be feminine, gay, or anything of the like, but just knowing that even as a masculine, you have a polar side that needs to be nourished and... Um, you know, that will, that is sensationalized, whether you want to accept it or acknowledge it or not. And so therefore needs to be taken care of, you know, if not healed altogether. Yeah, this could even be that now. And I'm thinking about the com inner conflict of someone not wanting to address their own emotions. Perhaps their uh, deficit of love or self-care um, or compassion and, like I said, sympathy and empathy because of the position of kind of fight or flight or uh, survival of the fittest. And this now I'm hearing it universally that they've been in. So this could be the masculine. This could be divine masculine altogether really coming out of the throes of the ego coming into coming in touch with yeah like here we go here this this is all I usually do sometimes I do call this a D-I-C-K um measuring contest here and again as I said I, I likened it to workplace um competition 
but this just could be life, like how society is built. You know, how the masculine, you, you, you may cry at night because you don't feel safe to express those emotions else otherwise or with anyone else. You're supposed to be strong and hard and get through it, even though those narratives are kind of being busted now. Uh, to one extreme or the other, you know, however you, you, you see it, but it, that's the, that's how the universe balances it out as well. Um, to come to a balanced mastery of emotion, of your emotional self. So that, that makes a lot of sense that you can't just kind of like glaze over what you've been feeling, even as a masculine, whether you've been in a relationship that's not working for you, but you just, you know, you make it work or you don't want to be alone. So you, you grit your teeth and bear it. Friends that, you know, hate on you, you know, they don't have, you know, like you, there's a silent competition there, but those are the homies. So, you know, you still call them up on a, on a boring Saturday night or whatever, or you did, you know, being, <clears throat> at, again, at a job that is wearing you down energetically, but it pays the bills. It helps to afford the lavish lifestyle that you live. Um, family dynamics that sometimes can be toxic, but you hang in there. Maybe you're the only voice of reason or the one that everybody's dependent on, you know, so you feel almost some sense of guilt for disconnecting in a way that would be um, healing or liberating for you. It's like, you don't really get to, yeah, like that That has a whole nother spin, especially for the masculine energy. That's, that's a pivotal shift in perspective for me here now as to how I'm looking at it. Because we ladies, we've been used to dealing with our feelings, whether they've been suppressed or otherwise. And yeah, sometimes it comes out in a blurb or an, um, an explosion of sorts, but still like that's our nature as feminines first. Some of us have a little more masculine energy. Certainly I can attest to that. So I'm not being funny. I'm being true is that, um, you know, to the point that some of us are a bit more uh, masculine in our, in our energetic composition to the point where we may not be so emotive and sensitive as others naturally. And even that has been a point of um, balancing for those of us that are, i.e. me, to really allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and be validated in what you feel, not to just kind of like compartmentalize your emotions like, okay, this is that and I'm gonna put that over here or I don't have time to be hurt about this. So I'll just lock that off to the side and deal with that later. It's like all of that stuff rushes back to the surface at some point in time or it, or it rears its ugly head in the way that you respond and react to circumstances in your life, i.e. times like this when there may be great change on the horizon and you feel like you're losing control because you really don't have control over anything else but how you respond or react to the change itself, you know, but you want to be able to control it because there's so many other things that you haven't been able to control or you've had to be too controlling to to the point where you don't even allow yourself to naturally be and feel and do and express the way that you would organically want to. That's that's an oppressive feeling as well. And that definitely would be a cause for a sleepless night when there's so many repressed emotions that have been unattended. So maybe this is, is for the men's more than anything of course like i said we can all take a page out of that book whether you're on the side of the spectrum where you're overly emotional you know um you know relatively speaking take that how you will i'm not being disrespectful or judgy i'm just saying you know what i mean where somebody that lives in the in the water and where somebody that that don't want to want to be nowhere near the beach <laughs> like you know they don't even want to be on the sand at the beach. 
Yeah, but it's all about how you transmute that energy, how you make it work for you. What do you allow it to say to you about who you are, about what you're capable of, what you're worthy of, what your potential is? You know, how does it get to be force fuel in your life? That's all a personal power there. That's not universally ordained as much as we like to pass the buck off to a higher power. It's really about you here in the earth, taking all the energy, all the experiences, everything that you, you know, have encountered and making a decision as to how you're going to now transform it or be transformed by it. Let's get one more. I'm going to get up out of here because the incense been out and I'm just chit-chatting. Oh, Lordy. Oh, man. <laughs> Back to this again. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it really just, it, it, what, it's, what it's bringing to light is um the... It, it comes back to what I was saying before. It's like, these are the potentials of outcome. As I'm saying that we have a choice to create or recreate according to our submission to reality as it is. Are you going to project, some, project a powerful and favorable result? or sabotage yourself is it the is, is this a fatal end you know because this should be now in the upside this should be the ending of torment of suffering by your own um decision here your own decision isn't the word like your what's the word that i really want here Like you're like he, like he's making a declaration, so to speak, a proclamation that I am not going to suffer anymore. I'm no longer going to self sabotage myself. I'm not going to be anyone's victim or or victimize anyone. I'm not going to, you know, be a casualty of my own pride and ego. That's what this is giving me here with the emperor. I'm not going to su su submit myself to unnecessary competition, pr unproductive competition. I'm not going to um, resist my true feelings and emotions, contest my own healing and my own, you know, suppress my own light even for the sake of others or even for my own uh, personal securities or insecurities. I'm not going to resist opportunities to experience myself as something different, to have a new beginning, to be reinvented, as a matter of fact, with the Page of Wands, to have the fortune and the fate that I've been designed to inhabit. It should be the end of any energy that's doing all that other stuff that I'm saying we're proclaiming it's not going to be. To the point where everything is fine if someone is willing to see their power and their authority over their own creativity, the power and authority of their own creativity. How about that? But just the same as sometimes with this Ten of Swords, it's like it could also be so, a very um, detrimental position to be in where you just feel like you have no more to give. You're all tapped out. Life has trampled you and run you over. 
you know, you out for the count here, angry at the world for what you've incurred, maybe angry at yourself, feeling hopeless. It's like it is the end and sometimes endings can feel quite devastating in that way where it's like you can't even see how to begin again. But as I said, it starts from this state here of what you allow your mind to create for yourself. So, uh, with the affirmation here and even with the um, emperor card, particularly by way of your emotional state and the stability and mastery of it, not control of it and dominance over it, but mastery, which means that there's acceptance and acknowledgement there. You don't feel no type of way because you feel some type of way. You're a human. You're supposed to, you know. But here is the point of, um, you know, affirmed a power with the magician that can really do anything with what they're given in the material form and certainly in any, any other way, shape or form as well. And as a matter of fact, is drawing more attention to beyond the material form, which actually there are no pentacles on the board, except for the one that the magician has, which says that from your moments of despair or points of, of uh, perhaps even um, some of your lowest points in life or least favorable points in life and the moments when you had to start over, maybe moments when you, you felt like you needed a fresh start um, or healing or to be regenerated in some way, that you still can take everything, every element of that real experience and make something powerful of it and bring it all to an end for a new beginning if you so choose to. It's just that I feel like the the um the word of caution is to not allow yourself to stay in this nine of swords energy for too long if at all in worry and anxiety about what hasn't occurred yet or what might occur if you're not um, on account of this change that you are being um, confronted with. You have the power to make it whatever you want it to be, including the absolute worst, <laughs> but certainly the absolute best too. Judgment, yeah, like you can, it's really a, a, a personal judgment call and how you answer to how life is leading you to, to destiny's fate. Yeah, it's, it's just time, it's, it's time. For those that have been calling in a certain reality, <clears throat> in their lives to actually be in position to have it, to be it, to do it, not in that order, to be it, to do it, to have it is more appropriate, <laughs> you know? So it's like allow the things that are not in that alignment to be released with joy, with peace, with grace. It may Everything might not be um, you know, gumdrops and lollipops, perhaps not knowing what's on the other side of that change. But that's when the spirit of trust and faith gets to kick in to high gear, most importantly within yourself, to know that whatever it is, you'll be able to adjust and alchemize it for the best. And also, at that much more intimate point of trust and faith is what opens the door for you to have trust and faith in something even beyond that, that it's whatever it is, is happening for you and not against you. And it's ultimately bringing in the wave of what you truly desire to experience in life, nothing less. Let's see what's on the top here. 
Yeah, there we go. Wish fulfillment. Oh, this is for the men's today, for sure. Like, I don't, you know, I try to keep it neutral, but yeah, men's. <laughs> it's time for you guys to be satisfied in spirit and in truth. Not just by the material accolades and achievements and pats on the back and how many women and how big is your house and your car and how much money you got in the bank. It's like you did all that, you tried all that, and that was not the ultimate key to your happiness. It's like spirit is saying, all right, now try this. I got you. You say you want to be able to sleep well at night. You want to wake up happy in the morning, want to feel proud of what you do and who you are, want to feel like your presence matters in the world, want to feel like you have control over yourself and over your reality, your creativity. You want to feel like you're well invested in the people, places, and things that you're associated with or affiliated with. You want to feel like you're on the path to purpose or doing something that's worth doing in life, you know, you want to feel fresh and regenerated, invigorated, empowered to, to do limitless uh, acts, make limitless expressions in the world. All right, I'm going to show you to that. I'm going to hold you to that. And then I'm going to show you to it. I'm going to show you the way this is how, this is where I'm calling you to. It ain't that over there. It's not that person over there. It's not those friends. It may not be that job. It may not be some family members, intimately or otherwise. Hey, you know, it just is what it is. It may cause you to set yourself apart for a bit to really get into who you are and what you truly want and how you feel about all of it. But in the end, in the beginning, which is what we're really talking about here, a new beginning, you are going to be so happy that you made this choice. You're going to be so happy that you surrendered to this change. So, yeah. So, I feel like masculine energy must be under undergoing the biggest um, impact from this transit, like I said, because it's so highly emotional and intuitive with Pisces energy. All up in that. It's in Libra, so it's like your relationships are what are what's going to be in your surroundings are going to be like your biggest points of projection, but there's a lot of activity of certain planets in Pisces that are in that same alignment. So it's, and then of course, don't forget about Mercury retrograde that is making everybody, you know, reflect and, and, um, and recount accordingly their steps and things like that. All for the purposes of a powerful forward motion, you know, to really be, ascend to this next level of, um, you know, mastery in whatever way that looks for you uniquely, but certainly in a way that is fulfilling. It's like spirit wants us to be happy. Universe, God, source, supreme, whatever you view it as, you don't have to sacrifice your ultimate happiness to be successful. That's the Kool-Aid that we've all been force-fed. It's been injected into our veins. <laughs> That if you want to be happy with in this regard, you have to give up this or sacrifice that or you're not entitled to this. And, you know, it's like, no, that's that's false. It's not true. Or you have to be disconnected from emotions to be materially successful. Like, how are you going to have feelings and be prosperous? Like, you need to have you need to be, you know, a taskmaster and heartless and cold and cutthroat and get to the top and don't care who you step on. It's like, especially for the masculine, that is not the case. And I think that the with what might really be this point here of reckoning is 
the shift in that perspective and the evidence that proves it to be so. Like if that's more of the anxiety in the, in the most high vibrational sense, it's like, damn, what I've been investing in all this time is not it. So what is, or if it is where I feel like it is, where their hearts and minds and spirits have been guiding them to, you know, gently so, and now it's like the abrupt, bam, you can't avoid it anymore. How will I fare in those waters? You know, how will I fare in that uncharted territory or that foreign territory? Will I be successful? Can I still maintain my sense of power and and prominence and esteem? And, you know, since it's a different metrics, you know, there than it is from where we're coming from, considering that old world to new world mentality where it's not a met like your your consciousness and your uh your integrity is your currency that's from all, that's all of that's all of your creative force right there so if that is the metrics it would be a bit um you know it would be a bit anxiety inducing to have to like switch your your measuring system altogether and be be conscious of whether or not you actually measure up or don't but i think this here is a short form confirmation that you absolutely do because you have the power to decide that you do. And if you don't feel that you do, you have the, the, the power to decide that you will, which ultimately is really affirming the now that you already are, okay? So the power of I am is the driving force in this reading. Not what, what will be or will I, or as if, <laughs> or, what about it's like i already am whatever that desire destiny ideal experience um whatever it is destiny is the most important thing is to be be affirming of it now regardless of what it might possibly look like. And of course, I'm saying this, you know, you can't not be in delusional in the ways that are not in alignment because the point is to be in alignment with destiny and that calling to be able to submit and or surrender to it. So there lies the point of, uh, you know, the first, the starting point, if that hasn't already been achieved, but for many masculine in particular of a certain affluence, it really is just all a matter of kind of like shifting your gears to perceive yourself in a more fluid nature, meaning in the way of emotions and intuition and all those more sensible and, and sensitive, sensational expressions of yourself that you may have been taught to suppress or to deny altogether. Everything else, you know, your power has already preceded you, your influence, your your um, creativity, your dominance in some regards, like it's already been proven in the ways that it was comfortable to do so. Now it's time to actually see yourself wholly and completely that full range force that you are, where both polarities are in accordance. So therefore, the whole of you is powerful and prominent. I hope that makes sense. I hope it does. Whatever it is. I feel like if you're not a masculine watching this, then this is hopefulness of the masculine energy coming into his own in the same way that we've been charged to come into ours. And that, for sure is a beautiful sign of harmony. Like that's a very hopeful and promising sign of creative affluence because feminine energy can be as ascended and transcended as she wants to be. Without our masculine counterpart, 
on the same page with us, meeting us at eye level, standing hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm, side by side, we're nothing as a collective. We're only as strong as our weakest link. So it's very promising to know that we are rising to the occasion together. So y'all just do it, men's. We here for you. We love you. <laughs> we are rooting for you, even though culturally and socially it may not seem that way, but the best of us are certainly rooting for all of us. On either side, I would like to say that that is true. But sp spoken as a true divine feminine, I am rooting for the best of all of us in spirit and in truth. So that's it. That's all. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for listening and watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.